Hello, you alarmingly beautiful epitome of humankind, you, and welcome to another kidney kicking episode of Techspert Weekly, possibly the least informative tech news show on YouTube. And because I am so absolutely royally hopeless at coming up with an intro every week, I thought this week I'd construct a little device to give me a bit of a hand. Say hello to the Introtron 3000. With just a quick spin, this wee beauty will tell me exactly how to fill this awkward, pointless bit before the main titles. As you can see, every number on that wheel represents a different kind of intro, while the golden Mickey means we just skip the whole charade and get straight down to business. And just ignore all of the Disney brand, and by the way, they're not sponsoring the show or anything, despite my countless begging emails. So anyway, less chatter, let's spin. Round and round she goes, where she stops, nobody knows. And it's stopped on number one, which is tell a joke. Uh, not very good at jokes, unfortunately. Um, here's one though, uh, what's brown and sticky? A stick. Okay, just do the jingle. Techspert Weekly. So fans of blasting complete strangers in the shins with an Uzi rejoice because Red Magic just launched its latest gaming smartphone, the Red Magic 6S Pro. And this upgrades some of the features found on the excellent Red Magic 6 Pro while also offering up a transparent option if you've got some deep desire to stare at chips and wires or see the internal fan whizzing about. Specs haven't really changed up much at all from that Red Magic 6 Pro, but you do have some upgrades here, including a 6.8 inch AMOLED screen that supports 720 Hz multi touch sampling. So, if your reactions aren't an absolute bag of dog shit like mine, you'll probably have a clear edge over the competition in those murdery games like Call of Duty. You've also got more reactive shoulder buttons, a Snapdragon 888 Plus chipset, and a 165 Hz Full HD panel that is unhampered by selfie cam notches. And if you want to know more, you can check out my full in-depth unboxing and gaming test with the Red Magic 6S Pro live right now. Meanwhile, Xiaomi is getting busy teasing its fresh new premium blows, which should be launching globally next Wednesday, that's September the 15th. These fancy pants handsets are led by the Xiaomi 11T Pro, which apparently will boast 120 watt wired fast charging, not that far off the 160 watt charging of the Infinix Concept phone that I tested earlier this year. While that concept phone could power up from 0% to a full 100% in just 13 minutes at the plug, the Xiaomi 11T Pro is expected to take between 15 to 20 minutes to do the same. So roughly the same length of time it takes for me to stop being violently sick every time I accidentally see James Corden. And Xiaomi's new blower is also expected to come packing a Snapdragon 888 chipset backed by bugger loads of RAM, along with a huge bright OLED screen and a beefy 108 megapixel camera sensor. But will it be one of the best smartphones of 2021? Well, I'm hoping to bring you a full in-depth unboxing and review really, really soon. Wink, wink, etc. Uh, and also this week, Apple revealed that the launch date for the new iPhones will be September the 14th next Tuesday. And unfortunately, I personally am washing my hair that evening, so I won't be able to bring you exciting live coverage of those new iPhones, which I'm sure will be very different and very innovative, but I'm sure you won't have to look too far on YouTube to stumble across some other people spaffing themselves silly over it all. It looks like AR is going to play another big part in the new iPhones if the invite is anything to go off. I don't know about you guys, but the last time I used AR was basically when my kid was being annoying. I handed her my phone for one of those apps where it looks like you've got a live tiger ponsing about in your living room, and that kept her busy for about five minutes. But what are you hoping to see in the new iPhones? I personally am hoping they finally got rid of that ridiculous mustache notch, though I don't think that's going to happen, but it'd be great to hear your thoughts down in the comments below, and we'll, uh, we'll smash our way through a few of those next week. Also this week, TCL launched a pair of fresh new 8K tellies, the mini LED 8 k x925 and the x925 pro which boasts a seriously slender brushed aluminium body those mini leds are up to 700 times smaller than in previous models for much sharper contrast with qled levels of color accuracy and brightness to boot you've got 8k upscaling to make lesser quality content appear sharper plus hdmi 2.1 and eoc support with 120 hertz memc so games will hopefully look nice and smooth and proper spaff worthy and the whole lot runs off Google TV, giving you fast access to all of the streaming services your soul desires, including everyone's favourite, Porn with Wi-Fi 6 support also built in. You've got an Oncure surround sound system with Dolby Atmos support, and the Pro model even has a mechanical slice built in to protect those speakers. And at the time I shot this video, I still didn't know the UK price and release date for these spangly new teddy boxes, but hopefully by the time I come to edit, I will know that so I can flash it up, like over here somewhere, uh, and if I don't, then f**k. 
Well, that's about it for the more interesting tech shenanigans this week, which regrettably means it's time for the part of the show that makes you really wish that the bloody apocalypse would get a proper shift on. It's viewer comments. Uh... Viewer comments. <laughs> Uh, so let's start off this week with Oliver, who says, I like how James Corden is becoming the regular target, a bit like Dr. Cox on Scrubs ranting about Hugh Jackman. And uh, likewise, Pugwash says, good video, although too many mentions of James Corden. Uh, yeah, very true. I am slightly concerned, I've got to admit, that in a Candyman-style situation, if you say James Corden too many times, he will actually just appear in your front room and monologue ceaselessly at you until you just give up on life and hoe yourself off the roof. Yeah, I'm just, I, you just can't get away from the lad. If he's not busy ruining kids' movies with his annoying yappy voice, he's, you know, busy buggering about in the middle of the roads, invading the social medias by thrusting his man parts at some hapless Americans who are probably just trying to drive to a doctor's appointment or something. And let me tell you what, if that was me in that car right there, the gas pedal would have f***ing cracked in half. I'd have slammed my foot on it so hard. Uh, lots of Isle of Wight correspondence following my uh, my little holiday there uh, <laughs> last week. Uh, drop of Darkness says, as someone who lives on the Isle of Wight, everything you said is accurate. Help. Laugh my ass off. Uh, Neon Visual says, the best thing you can do on the Isle of Wight is remember to book a return ticket. Uh, James, who's also from the Isle of Wight, says, hope you took your daughter to Tapnell Farm. Um, we didn't go to Tapnell Farm on one of the rare occasions that I could actually be bothered to drive more than about 10 minutes away from the holiday resort. Uh, we actually just went to Black Gang Chine, uh, which is apparently one of the oldest theme parks in the UK and it kind of shows. Boy, is that an experience. Um, my favorite part was probably Cowboy Town, which is basically an actual hellscape. Uh, just picture about sort of 200 small children all running around with little cap guns, all firing at each other, you know, slamming into your bollocks every two seconds because they're not paying any attention to where they're going. And also throwing around those little, what are they, the little packet things filled with like gunpowder or something that make a huge bang as soon as they hit something. There's literally just explosions and screaming all around you like you're actually in the middle of a world war. Like if you had PTSD or something, you'd just be a gibbering wreck curled up in the corner. And then one of my other favourite parts was the Rumpus Mansion, which is basically their version of like a haunted house type thing. Um, you know, quite sort of sedate and stuff until you get to the very end and then you're presented with uh, this. I'm trying to remember to stick a, a photo of the, uh, the sort of witch thing that just pops up. It was quite the eyeful, not what you were expecting at 2pm on a Tuesday afternoon. Anyway, enough uh, hot Isle of Wight chat. I know that's what you all came here for, uh, but yeah, let's move on. Baz Anime says, you need an Alka-Seltzer or Gaviscon, mate. Uh, yeah, apologies, I was a little bit gassy in that last episode. I really should stick to just the hard spirits instead of quaffing pints before every show. Uh, next up, Phil says, Fossil can stick their smartwatches up their arse, and Zeus can do the same with their new laptops albeit with a bit more difficulty. Sh customer support, never again. I uh, don't know, but I think I might be sensing some hostility here, Phil. Now, sorry to hear you've had some, uh, some bad experiences uh, with those guys. Uh, yeah, it's never nice when you get a new device, spend a lot of money on a new device, and it doesn't do what you want it to do, and then you're basically just told to go do one or whatever. And it's always interesting to hear, you know, how the customer support for different companies actually is, because I personally, I only deal with the PRs, who are the happy, smiley part of each company. want to make sure that I have as good an experience as possible for the obvious reviews. Uh, Matt says, Chris, your tan is fantastic. And uh, that comment is just followed by several laughing, crying faces. I, I again, I'm picking up a sort of a, a sarcastic vibe out of this one. Uh, Mr. Horse YT says, nothing wrong with pushing the pineapple, shaking the tree, mate. That most certainly depends on how much I've had to drink, and I'm definitely not talking about pineapple juice either, unless it's literally mixed in with about a litre of vodka. And we've got more, more Isle of, <laughs> of Wight comments. Uh, Flamin Hedgehog says, I've not been to the Isle of Wight, but as an Aussie, I'm not allowed to go anywhere outside. And also, to be fair, that would be a very long way to travel for an island that's much smaller and colder and generally crapper than the one where you already live. I think the only advantage that the Isle of Wight has over Australia is that all of the local wildlife doesn't try to just straight up murder you every time it sees you. Like seriously, what have you done to all the local fauna to make it so utterly f***ing hateful? I've never known an island to be quite so ridiculously dangerous and in fact lockdowns are probably doing you a favour, saving you, you know, putting extra decades onto your life. Uh, next up, Stephen says, can you do some of that jerry rig stuff on the Nokia XR20, give it a bit of a bend test? Uh, yeah, I do still have the Nokia XR20 uh, right here, so I can certainly try and use my immense strength 
to uh, to bend the bugger. All right, stand back because this is probably going to shatter absolutely everywhere. <sighs> uh, try it the the other way. Oh. Okay, no, it's uh, it's not bending, and I think I just kind of sh** myself a little. Uh, next up, Michael says, Thanks, Chris. Now I have an awful image of you in Budgie Smugglers. Um, awful? I can't possibly imagine why that particular image would be awful in any way. Uh, next up, UB30. Um, is that like a, a UB40 tribute band? Um, says, Hi, Chris. I've been watching many of your videos in the past months after getting enough with my old uncharging Nokia 8.1. I'm now so happy with my new A52S, which works extremely smoothly, thanks to your bunch of tech info with funny and northerner twists. As a Japanese, I always enjoy your variety choices of anime screens too. Yeah, uh, that's the phone that I'm still rocking right now, the A52S 5G, very solid mid-range uh, smartphone. My full review should be live right now as this video goes live, in fact, and I will have already swapped to another phone, which I can't possibly mention right now, but which I will be Hopefully reviewing next week. Uh, next up, my man G Day. All right, sir, hope all is well. Says uh, you should put the uncensored versions of the show on Patreon. Make that pocket money for booze. Yeah, I got I got to admit this Patreon stuff is sounding better and better all the time. And plus then I can show that shit to all of my old teachers who were like constantly telling me to cut out the potty mouth or I'd never amount to anything and be like, look, I'm literally making money from cursing. Shows what you all buggers know. Uh, we've got an actual techie question from Yuri who says, uh, could you do a comparison video between the A52S 5G and the Moto Edge 20? Uh, yeah, I certainly could. Uh, whether I'll have the time to is another matter entirely. But yeah, they're both very strong mid-range smartphones. Uh, you know, great camera tech, strong performance, brilliant battery life. But of course, the Galaxy A52S 5G also has uh, the IP67 water and dust resistance, as well as a headphone jack and micro SD memory card support, which are all stripped out of the Motorola. On the flip side, when you double karate chop the Samsung, that torch don't turn on. Ah, ugh. But yeah, there are quite a few mid-range mobiles with the Snapdragon 778G chipset emerging uh, in the next couple of weeks. So I'm hoping to do a bit of a three or even a four-way uh, comparison between them all. Uh, so stay tuned for that. And next, Barack says, Hey man, still waiting for your Galaxy Watch 4 in-depth review. Uh, yes, apologies, massively tardy on that. I'm still putting the standard Galaxy Watch 4 through its paces, uh, so I'm hoping to do a proper full-on one-month review of that shortly, uh, and then I'll be putting the uh, classic through its paces as well. And that bad boy right here, in fact, my big pile of tech that's waiting to uh, even be taken out of the box, let alone reviewed. I uh, really run out of time, so a couple uh, final comments. I have had uh, some more uh, people asking me where I get my wallpapers from, uh, so uh, it is all from wall.alphacoders. Dot com. Just search for any anime show on there. You get dozens and dozens, if not hundreds, of fantastic papers. Definitely a great source for all that. And uh, last comment for the week, uh, SJSTU says, you're such a grockle. I mean, is that some, some Harry Potter shit or something? I think it's a search. I always hear that when fantasy writers feel like they have to like make up curse words. Uh, in the books, you know, and sci-fi as well, really bad with it. Like in Battlestar Galactica, they were saying frack all the time. Oh, frack this, frack that. Just say fuck. Like, it's, it's post-Watershed when it's on the telly. You know, it's got guts and violence. There was literally an episode in there where women were being farmed for their uteruses. You know, just go up to a Cylon and say, fuck you, fuck face. What difference does it make? Uh, anyway, apparently a grockle is a holiday maker, especially one visiting a resort in Devon or Cornwall, according to... Uh, Google. So I, I guess that's fine. You weren't calling me a in Harry Potter speak or anything. Anyway, sadly, that's all the time we've got for viewer comments this week, but a massive thanks to everyone who commented last week. Some really good ones in there, as always. Uh, and apologies if we didn't get onto yours. Please do comment again uh, for next week's show and let me know what you think of the iPhone launch, all that shenanigans. Speaking of which, next week, next week, what the f*** is next week? We've got lots of stuff going on. We've got that Apple launch, of course. Uh, we've got the Xiaomi launch the day after the 15th, so at least those two don't clash. Got a couple more briefings, a couple more potential embargo lifts as well. So, yeah, quite a busy one so definitely stay tuned uh, for lots of fresh sexy video coming at your face holes uh, next week and then of course noon friday please do join me for another textbook weekly where i'll do a piss poor job of rounding it all up uh, as usual in the meantime stay true to yourselves love each other and have yourselves a fan bloody tastic weekend cheers everyone love you